come back right now. This morning, mom. I spoke in a firm tone, thinking I had to tell him immediately, which must have irritated Kevin. He angrily cut me off. I'm busy with a business trip. I know you're not on a business trip. Well, you're so annoying. Yeah, fine. It's not a business trip. Then you can come home, right? No, I'm going on a vacation abroad with Julie. What, Julie? Why? Is she your mistress? That's right. Anyway, we're about to catch our flight now. I'll be enjoying it with Kevin. Oh, I see. Well, Mom's funeral is about to start. What? What are you talking about? Don't you understand the difference between a joke you can make and one you can't? Unfortunately, it's true. I'm switching to a video call now, so you can see for yourself if it's real. With that, I switched to a video call. Hello, can you see? This is Mom's portrait. What? Julie and Kevin froze for a few seconds after seeing my mom's portrait. My name is Lisa. I'm a 32-year-old freelance web designer. I work from home while living with my husband, Kevin. He was introduced to me by a client from work, and we got along well, leading to a relationship and marriage without any real dissatisfaction. Back when we were dating, Kevin was calm and kind, but the moment we got married, his attitude grew increasingly cold. It was one of those days. Ah, another business trip? You just went last week, didn't you? Kevin had just returned from a business trip a few days ago, and now he was leaving again for a three-day trip, which surprised me. It was just too frequent. If he were in sales, frequent trips could be expected, but I hadn't heard of any department change since we got married. Such a sudden, significant change in circumstances seemed unnatural. I already told you, didn't I? There's an annoying client who keeps calling me to different places. Unlike you, sitting around clicking on a computer, I have to do actual work. Now hurry up and get my stuff ready. Saying that, Kevin threw an empty suitcase in front of me. Why do I have to do this? That thought crushed my heart. Kevin paid no attention to me as I silently stared at the suitcase. After eating and taking a bath as he pleased, he went to sleep. Even when I approached the bed, Kevin was snoring, showing no sign of waking up. Right in front of me was Kevin's smartphone. With fingerprint recognition, I could easily peek inside. With that thought, I picked up his phone, and as I was about to move his finger closer, the screen suddenly lit up. A notification from a messaging app appeared, with an icon that clearly belonged to a woman. I can't wait for our trip this weekend. Last week was shopping, so this time let's relax and cuddle at the hotel. Strangely, I didn't feel angry. Instead, I felt a sense of satisfaction, knowing I now had proof to demand compensation from both Kevin and this woman. This is my chance since he's drunk and in a deep sleep. I opened Kevin's phone and launched the messaging app. I immediately took out my phone, taking pictures of the screen and slowly scrolled through the messages. I recorded every exchange since the time they likely started their affair, capturing it all in a video. There were also photos taken of him in bed, completely naked, and I struggled to steady my trembling hands. I need to verify if Kevin's overnight stays were truly for business or just to meet his mistress. I asked an acquaintance working at the same company as Kevin, and it seemed that while not everything was a lie, Sometimes he really was on a business trip. Even after doing all of this, Kevin showed no sign of waking up, and gathering evidence was chillingly easy. It's like he never even bothered hiding his affair, 
He must think I'm a complete fool. The sloppy way he managed everything made my head spin. Even the next morning, Kevin seemed to have no clue. He sat as usual, waiting for breakfast to be served, and when he ate it, he complained. Your cooking is always so bland. It's not good. I work hard out there, but man, having an easy jobs you can do from home must be nice. Kevin belittled my job and complained about how tough his own work was. Watching him leave through the front door, I strangely felt nothing. I even had the luxury of wondering if I should start looking for a lawyer. Maybe because I stopped saying anything, Kevin seemed to be in a slightly better mood. All right, I'm off. That weekend, Kevin left for his business trip actually his affair trip with just a few words which was unusual after tidying up the house a bit i was debating whether to go out for groceries when i received a rare call on my phone i have an older sister named julie a younger brother named joe and a younger sister named sherry the call was from my brother joe joe was married too but he lived with our mom to save up for a home of his own Hello, what's up? I answered the phone, and Joe's voice sounded more somber than the last time we met. Lisa, sorry to call out of the blue. Actually, Mom passed away. What? No, that can't be true. I let out a scream. The times I have spent with my mom come back to mind. Hearing the sudden news of my mom's death felt like a stabbing pain in my chest. It's true. She suddenly collapsed this morning and we called an ambulance right away, but she didn't make it. I've tried reaching Julie too, but I can't get through to her at all. Lisa, do you know where she is? I'm sorry, I can't help. I have no idea where Julie is. I see. Sorry to bother you during such a busy time. Are you coming with Kevin? When he asked that, I hesitated for a moment. I had the urge to spill everything to Joe right then and there, but I held back, knowing it wasn't the right time to tell him. Kevin's on a business trip right now. I'll come alone. Got it. Let me know if there's anything I can help with. Thanks, Lisa. Honestly, there's so much to do, and I'm having trouble keeping up. I'm truly sorry for mom. Since you sound busy, I'll come over right now and help out. After finishing my call with Joe, I immediately contacted Kevin. My chest ached with the grief of losing my mom, and I grew anxious as Kevin took forever to pick up the phone. After ringing more than 10 times, Kevin finally answered, his voice clearly irritated. Finally, you picked up. Actually, Mom. Before I could finish, Kevin cut me off, shouting over me. Didn't I tell you, you lousy wife, not to call me at work unless it's urgent? Kevin's annoyed yelling on the other end of the line made me hold my breath for a moment. He was obviously irritated that his wife had called while he was on an affair trip. Realizing this, my head burned with anger. Come back right now. This morning, Mom? I spoke in a firm tone, thinking I had to tell him immediately, which must have irritated Kevin even more as he angrily cut me off again. I'm busy with a business trip. I know you're not on a business trip. Well, you're so annoying. Yeah, fine. It's not a business trip. Then you can come home, right? Nope. I'm on vacation abroad with Julie. What? With Julie? Why? Why do I have to explain everything to you? Too bad. It seems like I'm still the better choice. Julie. My sister Julie has always had a habit of taking whatever or whoever she likes, even if it belonged to me. Back in school, she even stole my boyfriend once. 
I can't believe that even as an adult, she's still like this. And now she's stealing my husband, not just a boyfriend. Kevin's wavering makes him just as bad. So Julie was your mistress, Kevin? That's right. Anyway, we're about to catch our flight now, and I'm gonna enjoy this trip with Kevin. We'll talk about that when you get back. For now, both of you need to hurry back. What? We're about to go on an overseas trip. Stop messing with us, you lousy wife. With that, Kevin raised his voice and abruptly hung up. My hand trembled as I held the phone, stunned by shock and confusion. They wouldn't even listen to me. After trying to call several more times, I eventually realized their phones had been turned off. It's impossible. I took a deep breath. If they don't want to talk to me that badly, and they said not to call, I'll respect that. They said it themselves, so they have no right to complain later. Then, I left a note in the dining room that said, going back to my parents' place, quickly packed my things and left the house. It was already evening by the time I arrived at my parents' house. Amid the bustling activity, Sherry and Joe greeted me. On the table was a list of tasks for the family, and a pile of documents was scattered around. Sorry, Lisa. We're still all over the place, trying to contact everyone. And we haven't even started tidying up anything yet. It's okay. Let's clean up together. By the way, where's Kevin? Joe, expecting both of us, raised his eyebrows at the sight of me alone. Sherry also looked outside, checking if Kevin's car was there. I made up my mind and told them about the phone conversation I had with Kevin and Julie a few hours earlier. After an almost painfully silent pause, Sherry was the first to speak up. What? I can't believe it. Those two. What on earth are they thinking? Sherry, trying her best to suppress her anger, clenched her fists tightly, her face flushed red. Julie, you've got to be kidding me. Joe muttered in a terribly low voice. That day, I stayed at my parents' house, and the next morning, we all busily went about tasks like submitting the death certificate. I contacted the relatives we hadn't been able to reach yesterday, informing them about mom's passing and the time of the wake, and focused on getting everything ready for it. When the wake began, despite the short notice, many people came to pay their respects to mom. I'm truly sorry for your sudden loss. My heartfelt condolences. The relatives offered their condolences, but each time, they asked about Julie and Kevin's absence. Huh? Where's Julie? I don't see Kevin either. Julie's whereabouts are unknown, and Kevin had an important business trip he just couldn't get out of. How could her whereabouts be unknown at her own mother's funeral? A business trip during his mother-in-law's funeral? Is that really unavoidable? After I explained, Reactions varied from disbelief to anger, and some people even tried contacting Kevin or Julie on the spot. However, wherever they were on their vacation, their phones seemed to be off and no one could get through. After a chaotic night, I collapsed into sleep, and the next day came. Lisa, I really think you need to get in touch with Julie before the funeral. I agree. I don't want them here either. But considering mom, I think it's the right thing to do. Prompted by the two of them, I decided to take my chances and call repeatedly until someone answered before the funeral started. At first, I couldn't get through, but after over a hundred calls, I finally connected. Finally, you answered. What do you want? Stop calling me. Yeah, we're trying to enjoy our vacation. All these calls are ruining it. I see. Well, the funeral for mom is starting now. What? 
What nonsense are you talking about? Don't you know the difference between a joke you can make and one you can't? Unfortunately, it's true. I'm switching to a video call now so you can see for yourself. With that, I switched to a video call. Hello, can you see this? It's mom's portrait. What? Julie and Kevin froze for a few seconds after seeing mom's portrait. Is this some kind of prank because we were on an affair trip? A prank? Geez, that's not funny at all. Cut it out. Julie, Kevin, I wish it were just a joke too. Joe quietly conveyed his message, trembling with anger at the two who were joking around. Julie, if you don't come back soon, you won't be able to say goodbye to mom. Wherever you are, you should at least come to the funeral. Is it really mom's funeral? I've already told you yes. No, it can't be. Why, mom? No one told us about this. Why didn't you tell us something so important sooner? I tried to tell you. I've been calling both your phones and Kevin's phone repeatedly since the day before yesterday, and I'm sure you've got tons of missed calls from us and the relatives, haven't you? At my words, Kevin choked up, looking away. I didn't know when Kevin turned his phone back on, but with all the calls about mom's death, it easily exceeded 200 attempts in total. Maybe we should just say the reception was bad during the trip? Oh no, I'm not letting you off that easy. I'll make sure everyone knows the truth. You better hurry back, though. There might not be a place for either of you anymore. Pretending not to know was clearly no longer an option. Oh no, we gotta go, Julie. Kevin called out to Julie, who was in a hysterical mess on the ground, sobbing, and ended the call. After that, my siblings and I managed to see mom off. But at the final farewell, I couldn't hold back my tears at the sight of mom's peaceful face. We cried openly, hugging each other, Joe, Sherry, and I, as we said our goodbyes to her. After the funeral ended, we returned to our parents' houses. Kevin and Julie still hadn't returned from their trip. The next afternoon, we heard heavy footsteps as Kevin burst into the living room, with Julie trailing behind him. Did we make it in time? Just as he said that, Joe rushed up to Kevin and threw a right punch at his face. Kevin screamed as he fell backward with a loud thud, and Sherry slapped Julie across the face. How could you go on a vacation while Mom was dying? The wake and funeral are both over now. Kevin, how could you even show your face here now? If I were you, I'd be too ashamed to come. Kevin clearly didn't expect to be punched, his face dumbfounded. When he finally seemed to understand what had happened, his face turned red with anger as he yelled back. Knock it off. You didn't have to hit me. It's just a funeral. Just a funeral? Kevin, unwilling to admit his fault, glared at me as he spoke. Besides, when you called, you didn't say what it was about right away. If you had just told us clearly, Julie and I would have turned right back at the airport. Enough! You two didn't even try to hear Lisa out. Joe's cold voice drowned out Kevin's shouting. Unlike Joe, who was still shaking with anger, Sherry showed no attempt to hide her disdain as she glared at Kevin and Julie. Did it never occur to you guys that Lisa might be lying? Of course not. I recorded our entire conversation. I've already had both of them listen to it. If you want, you can listen too. When I showed them my phone, Kevin and Julie's eyes widened in shock. What? Recorded? What do you mean? Given my line of work, I have all calls made on my phone automatically recorded. Unlike meetings on the computer, 
The calls that come through my phone often involve minor corrections or additions. Since they're easily communicated, it can lead to disputes about what was said. It's a handy feature, especially when trying to figure out which pushy salesperson is responsible, so I use it a lot. Naturally, the conversation with Kevin had also been recorded, and I had already let Sherry and Joe listen to it. Sherry glared at Kevin, her eyes wide with disbelief. Kevin, you're lying to Lisa, aren't you? I checked with your company. Your department doesn't even have any business trips right now. Plus, it seems like you've been taking paid leave continuously. You snooped around about me at my job? It turns out that Sherry, who happens to work at the same company as Kevin, had grown suspicious and decided to look into his department regarding this whole situation. Of course. When someone from the same company as you is too busy to attend their own mother-in-law's funeral, let alone going on a business trip, it raises questions. Or is there something you don't want people looking into? Joe, who had remained silent, raised his pale face and looked seriously at Kevin. Now that you mention it, what have you been doing with Julie all this time, leaving Lisa alone while you took paid leave? Kevin arrogantly shouted. None of this is any of your business. As Kevin's loud voice echoed, I turned on my phone. It contained all the evidence I had previously gathered of his affair. The trip you took was with Julie, your mistress. I said, showing them my phone. Hey, you have no right to reveal that. Ignoring Kevin's yelling, I continued to show Sherry and Joe the exchanges between him and Julie, along with receipts from the luxury gifts. I also showed them the messages exchanged right before the trip. What is this? I can't believe it. Julie missed mom's funeral to go on this trip with him? This is disgusting. And these messages. So sweet, it's sickening. Sherry's disgust was immediately apparent. Joe, on the other hand, looked shocked, his face pale as he stared at Kevin and Julie. It's not just the trip. This is a complete betrayal of Lisa. And buying all these gifts for another woman who's not even his wife? That's a huge hit to the household finances. Kevin had hardly contributed to the household expenses, instead spending his money on Julie, his mistress, which was unforgivable to Joe. Wait, what are you looking at? Kevin, furious, snatched the phone from us. He glanced at the contents, then stormed toward me, ready to grab me. When did you? You went through my messages with Julie without my permission? As Kevin grabbed my clothes roughly, Joe restrained him, and in frustration, Kevin threw my phone onto the floor. The loud thud echoed painfully in the tense room. I didn't want to do this, but you've been acting suspiciously for a long time. All those fake business trips, barely coming home, not contributing any money to the house, and never saying a kind word to me. Of course, I knew something was up. I picked up my phone and retaliated. And it's not like I went snooping. I happened to see a message from Julie on your phone before bed. There were other pieces of evidence that came out easily from your bedroom. You were so bad at hiding it that even as the cheated spouse, I was stunned. That's when Kevin snapped. Shut up. A man who has a wife and works hard for his family attracts women. It's how the world works. Men are judged on that. Or would you rather be married to a loser nobody cares about? As I listened to him, I couldn't help but look down. Not because I was hurt. I laughed. His excuse was so pathetic that it was absurd. I managed to regain a straight face, took a deep breath, and answered his words. You only get to say things like that when you actually take care of your family, 
You have no right to talk about responsibility. Don't ever come back to this house. Not long after that, I heard that Kevin's parents disowned him, mistreating his wife, having an affair, and showing no remorse, all while acting out after his mother-in-law's death, was more than enough for his parents to cut him off. I packed all of Kevin's belongings and began living peacefully on my own. Of course, I also contacted a lawyer to discuss compensation for the affair. After sending a formal notice of the claim to Kevin and Julie, I started receiving frequent messages from Kevin on my phone. Come on, give me a break. My parents kicked me out, and now I'm stuck renting a cheap apartment. I can't live like this. And that amount for the compensation? That's crazy. You snooped around, making it look like everything's my fault. I blocked his number without hesitation, content to let him think whatever he wanted. From what I heard afterward, Kevin and Julie started living together, but news of the affair had reached HR through Sherry, and Kevin was demoted to a corner of the company. Unable to endure the embarrassment, he ended up resigning from the company. So you quit your job? Of course. I had no place left in that company. Unbelievable. So you're just unemployed now? Well, let's work together. Until I find a job, Julie, you can cut back a bit. Don't make me laugh. A man without money isn't a man at all. Just because you've got a good face doesn't mean you can ride on that forever. What? I can't stay with you anymore. Oh, what a waste that I took you from Lisa. Why? In that case, I'll just have to go back to Lisa. One day, the doorbell rang. Wondering who it was, I opened the door to find Kevin, looking much more disheveled than before. What are you doing here? I told you never to come back. When I dismissed him, he forced a nasty grin and said, All right, fine. I won't come in, but at least help me out with money. I can't even afford a new suit, and this is a big issue for me as a top salesperson. The alimony's too much, and I barely have enough to live on. Come on, can't you cut me some slack? Now he's come straight to my house to beg for money. Kevin has really hit rock bottom. That's not my problem. Why don't you ask Julie to support you? Shut up. Don't mention her. She dumped me as soon as I quit my job and ran out of money. When I made a sarcastic comment, Kevin bit his lip in frustration, his brow furrowed. So basically, you went from a cash cow to a burden, and she threw you away. After all those expensive gifts and luxurious trips you took her on, it turns out Julie only saw you for your money. It's good you finally realized that. And you were praised at work and earned well. Unlike me, you were supposedly this accomplished guy in a company. So why don't you take care of yourself now? Maybe it's time to find someone who appreciates you for who you are. Though I doubt anyone would want to take you as you are now. Anyway, goodbye. I hope I never see you again. With that, I slammed the door shut. I immediately contacted my lawyer, and soon after, Kevin was issued a restraining order against approaching me. Later, my lawyer informed me. Kevin claims he can't pay the alimony, and upon investigation, it turned out he really had spent all his earnings on his mistress Julie and frivolous activities. Furthermore, since he had left all the household responsibilities to me, he had no life skills, and now, living in his current apartment, he couldn't manage the chores properly and was apparently leading a miserable life. The disheveled appearance when he showed up at my door was a clear result of his inability to manage even basic living. With all that, it was unlikely he'd find another job, and unable to cook, He'd been eating nothing but junk food, which caused his health to deteriorate. At one point, 
he ended up being unemployed. There was no way Kevin would find a decent new job. But since he still had alimony to pay, a few months later, I heard from Sherry that she saw him working as a traffic guard on a road she passed during a business trip. He looked quite unwell. After looking down on everyone and acting so selfishly, now he's stuck in a low-paying job where he has no freedom. It's almost funny. As for Julie, I heard rumors that, having been cut off by her family and unable to pay her share of the alimony, she had borrowed money from shady lenders and was now working at a nightclub to pay it off. Afterward, I used my savings along with the alimony to quickly move into a new apartment. The current apartment was also the place I had lived with Kevin, and just being there brought back unpleasant memories. I wanted to leave such a place as soon as possible. My work continued to grow steadily, and I was able to build a good track record while gaining trust from multiple clients. It was a fulfilling single life where I could fully focus on my work. With a fresh start, I began my new life. A few months later, I started dating a man I met at a cafe. He worked in project development at a major company and showed a lot of interest and respect for my work as a web designer. A few years later, I married him and we were also blessed with a child. This time, there were no issues and our baby was growing well. My new husband took great care of me during my pregnancy, and now we were both eagerly preparing for the birth of our child. A kind husband and another little one soon to join our family. I was truly enjoying my days, filled with love and peace in our home.